I'll tell you what, it's safe to say that the previous transfer special lacked in the transfer department. I've heard you, I've acted. Let's look at the transfer history. Four signings made in the summer, three of them you've seen. The last one, though, should leave all of you with a smile on your face. Alex Holchuddy is back in Rugby Town Colours. Signed from Middlesbrough for free. I say signed from Middlesbrough, they released him. Alex Holchuddy joined us way back when, many, many years ago now. Left us for £500,000, came back on loan for one year, and the transfer AI of Football Manager's done its thing. Middlesbrough have released him. I've bought him in to be a squad player. I will admit as we look at the squad screen sort of viability, this is certainly a transfer driven by nostalgia and, well, just sentimental value. But I think that's okay once in a while. Today, of course, marks the start of season number seven. We've got our A-hole back today. Two massive games in League One. Let's see how we get on right after we run the intro. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Like I already mentioned, it is the start of Season 7. It's episode number 46, and it's the start of our League One campaign, which, according to the live odds, has us fifth favourites for promotion, and Goma and Guerrero in the Media Dream 11, things we love to see. And just as a little reminder, the board expectation for this year is a mid-table finish in League One. I do feel like this is maybe going to be a difficult season for us, unless I can get some crazy recruitment done between now and the end of the month when the transfer window closes. I think mid-table to playoffs is probably where we're going to be. Has to be said, League One in this save game is an absolutely stacked league. If we just go back to the season preview, the size of some of the teams here, this looks more like a championship table to me than a League One table. There, there's some big teams down in this division. It's going to be tough. And in our opening game of the year, we are truly going to be tested. We are at home for it, yes, but it is against a Swansea City side with a media prediction of fourth who were relegated two years ago and last year finished fourth. They're a team that are going to be up there with the playoffs, so this should be a good little test for us. And the second game we've got today is going to be an away day. We are heading to the Crowd Meadow in Shrewsbury, where we are taking on a team with a media prediction of 11th. You might remember, Shrewsbury in this universe had a tycoon takeover. Uh, the tycoon has withdrawn all funding after three years of them not really doing anything, except, well, actually getting relegated, then promoted under his stewardship. Yeah, he, he's pulled the plug. Uh, their media prediction's 11th. I'd like to think we'll beat them, although last year they did also finish third in League One. Neither of these games is going to be easy. Now, of course, just as a little reminder, we did pivot tactical systems midway through last year, ready to make the most of Ngoma and Guerrero. The start to this season is going to be tricky, though, because we are without our main goal scorer in Jude Sunset Bell. This man has been imperative to everything we've done, I feel like, over the last few years. His absence is going to hurt. He contributes a lot of goals for us. But of course, Sam Fahey here is the man we're going to look to step up. And I've been told it is Fahey as opposed to Fey. I, I really should just ask him. He's not a real person. I could just say it however I wanted. I'm going to say Fey. It might be Fahey or Fahey. I, he's, he's Fey. I've decided. It's official. Mark it down. Judgment ruled. But undeniably, there is going to be big pressure on Sam to step up. At 16 years old, him and William Espinosa. They're going to be shouldering a bit of responsibility. I discussed this a couple of episodes ago. The reality is that the one area of weakness that I fear in our current first team is the strikers. Naturally, you do actually need to score goals to be successful in football. I don't know if you've heard that, but you do need to score goals. Guerrero and Ngoma can play as strikers, but undeniably they are best as players playing just in behind the strikers within our system. When it comes to other attackers out there, of course, McCulloch, who's been out on loan the last few years, is actually rated really highly. He broke his leg, you might remember, back in July. I'm laughing there. That's to hide the pain. But undeniably, there is a little bit of nervousness around the attacking options that we have. I maybe could have gone out there and signed someone. If I'd done that, then the young players don't get first team football. And I feel like with the amount of young talent we've got and the potential that we have, I have to give them opportunities in the first team. Now I'll admit, I'll tell you all of that with a straight face to then reveal that for Aronson, remember the Icelandic bloke, I might be about to sign him. Remember last episode where he was asking for a lot of money? I've managed to negotiate a deal where we're only paying him £2.4,000 a week. And I know he can't finish and he has no composure, but with those physicals at this level, I think he could be very good. He might be here for game number two of the episode. And if he doesn't get a work permit, I 
think I'm going to use my work permit ESC slot on him. Swansea, first game of the year. Let's get right into it. So I did already talk a little bit about the striking scenario at the club. Of course, N'Goma, Guerrero, they are going to be nailed down as our centre attacking mids this year. Defensive mid-wise, of course, we've got Stuart Masters, who joined us from amateur football in Portugal and has just made a crazy step up. This guy's been absolutely phenomenal for us so far. He is going to play alongside Timmy. I feel like these two guys are very well suited to this level of football. Two very, very solid players. But if they don't step up to this level, we've still got players like Mbamba in our ranks who are just very, very solid defensive midfielders. Brody Spencer perhaps is our fourth choice defensive mid. And if none of these work, well, fret not because we've got a whole bloody chuddy. Love this man. Or plan B, I suppose, would be Nesbitt. And um, probably is a suggestion that Nesbitt is better, isn't there really here? Yeah, okay, I'll admit it. Nesbitt's very, very good. I mentioned him right at the end of last episode. He was in our youth academy. I feel like he might be our backup right back and defensive mid at points this year. 18 years old, mad potential. I'm excited by this guy. Keep an eye on him. In terms of the defence, nothing too crazy going on here. Chambers and Ricky D are left back and right back. Same as last year. McLaughlin comes into the team, I think, to start the season alongside Mkise. Mkise, undeniably a amazing centre-back for us. I'm a little bit concerned that our two centre-backs might be a little bit slow as a pairing. We'll monitor it if it doesn't work out. There's other options out there. There's Andrani. There's Luigi Gasparini, who maybe would have started this game if not for his injury for the year. But this guy, Italian, 20 years old, signed on a free from Roma. Yeah, mm -mm. he probably is going to replace McLaughlin once he's fully fit. And of course, in goal, we are continuing with Keeley. I discussed last episode the desire to maybe bring in a goalkeeper. Keeley does have this issue with injuries, which for a goalkeeper is less than ideal. We did sign Mike McCartney. Now, Mike here, I don't want to say he was a panic buy, but it was just a case of he was the last thing left on the shelf. So I've taken him off and bought him just so that I've not gone to the supermarket for no reason. If he has to play for us... Hopefully, he's okay. I mean, American under-23 international. He should be bloody brilliant. But he didn't look that good. Anyway, that is a little bit of a rundown of the squad as we get into this game. This does feel like a big one against Swansea. And not an easy game by any means, but at home. It's the kind of game that would be a good statement of intent if we could win against a team who have been in the playoffs last year and were in the championship the year before that. Okay, here we go. Swansea City are playing a 4-4-2. We are playing this narrower system, which on occasion works amazing. I do find that sometimes where the wing packs get a little bit isolated and they're forced to go inside, but with the two defensive mids, they're always free inside for that pass. So I'm hoping that at this level, we're not going to kind of get caught out a little bit. But yeah, just keep a little eye on that. It's something that I am conscious about. I have considered the idea of maybe playing uh, Guerrero and Ngoma on the left and right hand side as kind of more of a traditional 4-2-4. But at least to start the year, we are going to go with this narrower system and see what happens. Chambers is on the attack. Speaking of space in the wing, he is there. And Goldsmith shot. And is is gone out. That that looked really weird from the angle. It looked like it stayed in play to me. I think it hit the board. I'm just, I'll be honest. It probably did hit the board. I'm just blind. I think I blinked at the wrong moment. You know when you watch football matches on TV and sometimes you see a shot that whizzes wide and actually, you know, from the TV view it looks really close and then they show another angle and it was nowhere near. I think it was a bit like that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm rambling on about. We're 11 minutes into this game. I feel like there's... At high energy for today's episode. I don't know if you can tell that. There's there's excess energy. I've not done enough today. I've eaten too much. I was going to say E numbers and sugar, but I've not actually had any of that. Ricky D's on the attack. There's options in the middle. It's in the box. Goldsmith scores. 1-0. I'm going to try and calm down slightly. When I was a small child, I used to get told that I had verbal diarrhea. I've turned it into a living, but there are times where I question myself, what am I doing? The first... 12 minutes of this game are one such example. But hey-ho, let's look at the positives. We're a goal up, 15 minutes in. It's what we wanted. Now, I want another. Masters, can you put in a tackle? He can't, although Mkise, there to mop up the pieces. Get him in the South African national team. Except don't, because then he'd vanish on AFCON duty. Faye has just shot wide. That's, that's poor by the Scotsman, isn't it? I don't want to put too much pressure on my own shoulders, but Faye is an amazing striker. I do wonder if we've got the future of Scottish football in our hands. I feel like for the people of Scotland, we've got to rear him well. Here he is through. I mean, he's missed again. He was offside. It wouldn't have counted. But yes, Scottish viewers out there, I'm raising Faye for you. I want him to join the Tartan army and be the dreamy goal scorer that Scotland deserves. I'm trying to think of a dreamy goal scorer from Scotland. I can't think of many. We're on the attack here. Faye, wide area. Can he turn provider? Gives it to Ricky D. Isaka steals away the ball. 
I mean, right now we're massively on the attack. Also, it's taken me 29 minutes to notice Slate is playing at left back for them. Our old mate, Mr. Slate. Wide with Lowell now. We'll, we'll check up on Slate in just a moment. After this attack, which we need to deal with, Lowell whips it in. Davis is under it. That's very lucky it's gone wide. If you were wondering about Slate, here he is, 19 years old. How does he compare with kind of our left back options? Would you rather have Luke Chambers or Slate? We got Chambers on a free transfer. We sold Slate for, was it 500,000? Then we sold on the clause for 1.2 million. When you look at that comparison, it looks like I'm a transfer genius. Okay, it's been all action in this game so far, but we are a goal to the good. Just the one goal, though. There's lots of time for things to change here in this game. McLaughlin at the back. Timmy now with the ball, turns it, has space. Guerrero plays it through to Faye. I think he's onside. One-on-one, -on -one, should score. Fluffs his lines again. With the finishing he's shown today, I'm sure many Scottish fans are watching this thinking, I don't want him in the national team. Yeah, I'm wondering that too. Guerrero, can you turn around our fortunes? Goldsmith, shoots. Ripples the roof of the net and goes over. I mean, it's almost half time in this game. We've got an XG of 2.42. Discussed the striking conundrum. It is looking like we're missing a good goal scoring striker. When's the Icelandic bloke with eight finishing joining? I am going to tell the players I'm pleased. I might be inviting on complacency here, but I feel like I've got to cuddle the players and be gentle. You know, big step up, nervy occasion in League One. Right now we're doing enough. Whether or not we'll be doing enough at the end of the game remains to be seen. I've taken a very high risk by doing the praisey team talk. Complacency is just a thing, isn't it, in Football Manager? You praise your players, then they forget how to kick a ball in the second half. We've got defending to do here. Keeley collects. For a moment, I thought the striker there was going to win that in a battle between three players and himself. I would have been fuming had it gone in, but no, it was a good collect. And now we're back in possession. Mkise, the ball-playing defender, lays it forward to Masters. Options left, options right. And Goma is there, picks him out. Murphy and Goma, Guerrero, lovely build-up play. Can we go wide? Left back and right back on the overlap. Ricky D is there, options in the middle. Ricky D goes on his own. It's his first goal of the season. I think he meant it. I think he meant it. Might be doing him an injustice here. I'm just so accustomed to seeing him cross the ball in. I genuinely think he has meant to shoot that there. Timmy plays it in behind. Ricky D picks it up. And I have no idea why he's shot from there. Not going to complain. It's gone in. Okay, our played in this game. Faye, you have been dog do. Uh, Espinosa, you come on and show us what you can do. Masters hasn't been exactly flawless. And Bamba... On you come. Do I want to make any other changes? Our defenders on yellow cards scare me slightly. You know what? Ryan Morgan on for his debut. Signed as a new left back option. We'll bring him in. And that's going to be my last change for now. No, it's not. Chambers has just been sent off. What's just happened? You know when I compared this bloke to Slate? Take it all back. Okay, well, Guerrero and Ngoma, who do I keep on? I'm going to keep on Guerrero. He's been having the better game. We're going to go to just the single center attack in mid. I can't believe what's just happened here. Just as I was making the changes as well. Ricky D and, uh, well, Ryan Morgan. You guys just need to play as a regular left back and right back on defend now. Uh, Faye, you are still coming off. I'm, I'm angry, in case you can't tell. I guess we'll just make the free changes for now. You're thinking it, I'm thinking it too. Why didn't I pause the game to make the subs, then Chambers never commits the foul? The honest answer is... I don't, there's no excuse. I'm just an idiot. I mean, the good news is, with 10 minutes left, we are still two goals to the good. And right now, we're weathering the storm. And actually, we've got a two on two here. Espinosa lays it forward to Goldsmith, who's already got one goal to his name. Espinosa with the afro in the middle. The American, can he do it for America? Lays it to Guerrero. Should have scored and only hits the woodwork. Goldsmith free kick. Takes it quick. Espinosa's there. Was about to use the power of the throw. Unfortunately, it, afro didn't get on the end of it. They've dealt with it and now they are on the attack. Swansea have lots of players forward here. Why are we running back so lazily? McLaughlin, great tackle. Guerrero. You can really tell that Swansea are throwing players forward now, but it is leaving them open. Espinosa, two men to aim for, picks out Goldsmith. And we really should have had a third here. And yet, there's another highlight. Can the, can the game just end? I don't, you know, 2-0's fine. If they get a goal now, suddenly it's squeaky bum time. And all these chances that we've missed, both when we had 11 men and now with 10 men, the chances that we've missed, we could still come to regret them. Adams is bringing the ball forward. He lays it wide to Slate, who's on a bucking himself. It'd be funny if him and Chambers got sent off. Instead, he's going to play it to Dooch. And he gets an assist. Why did I, why did I Slate Slate? 
Why did I criticise him? If he goes on to get like another assist and Swansea rescue a point, I mean, even if he doesn't get an assist, even if they just get a point there, I look like a mug, don't I, for that Chambers comparison. I still maintain that Chambers is the better player, even if he's not on the pitch. There's a kickoff highlight, folks. There is a kickoff. I don't enjoy this. This is not fun. Timmy Mkise. I did set the fullbacks to defend. I want to remind you all of that. Ricky D. Remember to do your job, mate, and defend Mkise. Please get us back to two goals ahead. We created stuff prior to them scoring. We can still create stuff now. Timmy, options left, options right, tries to pick out Espinosa. It's shocking. And now they're on the attack. Swansea, play it forward. Adams is in behind. There's not that many players forward for them. And yet, I'm nervous. The build-up plays on the left-hand side. Lloyd, Adams, Keaton could pull the trigger. Has acres of space. They've scored. They've scored. Why do I play football manager for fun? I'm fuming. Let's look at the positives. At least Slate wasn't actively involved in that goal. At least Slate wasn't involved. It's 2 2. It's 2 2. Right, is there any added time? We don't know yet. There's a corner. Come on, let's steal this game now. They've been celebrating, haven't got a goal. We can still turn it around. Mkise goes down in a heap. The ref doesn't give a penalty. They've got players running forward. Lloyd is doing tricks in the corner. Clears it. Morgan is there. Captain Morgan, what can you do? Mbamba, Morgan, Guerrero. I mean, this is lovely, lads, but we are down a man and we need a goal. There's eight minutes of added time. Has someone, has someone had a serious injury? I've not been with a mate. Guerrero misses. Has someone, I was about to say, has someone had a serious injury? I'm not aware of. Ah, their striker did. That makes sense. Well, you know what? Guerrero's had his fair share of chances and missed every single one. We've drawn 2-2. I'll level with you. It feels like a defeat. Our XG is 3.81. I mean, we missed Jude. Get the Icelandic bloke in. If you want to find a positive, it's not actually a disastrous draw. And we did actually create a lot. So against lesser teams, maybe we'll be fine. As long as we don't get a sending off. Also, I ruined my head and I with the hoodie thing. Ruined my head. Fix that. L looks awful. I know what you're thinking, Jack. You never seem to normally care about your appearance. Yeah, no, I don't. But right now I look like a mug in games. So at least I can look slightly presentable. So like I mentioned earlier, we are doing a second game today against Shrewsbury Town. The eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed an EFL Cup game against Cambridge. Don't care about this competition. League to opposition. I'm going to rotate the team for that one. We're back in a week for the Shrewsbury game. Ferrarinson might be here. Will he start? <laughs> Potentially. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Okay, I've tried to calm down emotionally and just hyperactively just a little bit as we head into the second game of today's episode. Shrewsbury await. We did play Cambridge midweek. 3-0 winning this one. Nice variety of goal scorers. They had a load of injuries. We didn't, so that's good. Nesbitt, speaking of the devil, picked him up earlier. Man of the match in this game. Things we love to see. And another thing that we love to see is that Hayalti Forarinson is in the building. I feel like we need a name for this guy. Hayalti Forarinson is, is a bit of a mouthful. Maybe we should just call him Thor. The god of thunder, the god of running fast and not knowing how to shoot. He's starting in today's game. He is our second ESC player. He's going to be playing a lot for us. He's on £2.4,000 a week. That makes him the highest earner in this entire team. Always feels like a little while since the last away day when we do the transfer specials, but today we have got one. Let's head to the crowd Merrow. Me me Merrow? Meadow? Words are hard. We're heading to Shrewsbury. So for today's away day, we are heading to Rugby of the West. I, I say Rugby of the West because it kind of goes Rugby, Coventry, Birmingham, then Telford, Shrewsbury. Like, it's kind of like a mirror. If it was mirrored down the middle, Shrewsbury, Rugby, polar opposites. We're over here today. Also, I say Shrewsbury. I think it's meant to be said Shrewsbury. Who oh, no. knows? It's one of the two. And I feel like depending on who you ask, people disagree. Anyway, holy car park, Batman. Um, I've just had a voice crack there. They've got a car park here. What? I'm excited. Okay, so first things first, Rosebury's ground is alike on the outskirts of town. I will say now, there's not a whole lot going on around the edge. Presumably, they were in the middle of surfacing this football pitch. Either that or they ran out of money to do the other half. We've got a railway line on one side, although there isn't a station actually next to the stadium. We've got a few smaller pitches here, and you can do jiu-jitsu next door to the stadium. We love extracurricular activities. Presumably, because it's just a big slab of concrete around a stadium. We're going to have lots of street view options. We have some street view options. Here are the lovely pearly gates of Shrewsbury Town Football Club. Mini roundabout. First mini roundabout I've seen in an away day car park. And here we have the stadium, which 
I mean, it kind of does look like they've just built a stadium in the middle of the countryside from here, doesn't it? I will also say the uh, the number, the number, the date in the top left, I guess it is a number, 2011. So the football stadium could have changed since here. Okay, we've looked at the car park. There wasn't a lot happening, to be fair. There was one dot in the stand and one dot to the edge of the pitch. Here is the one in the stand. And here is... What is happening? We're in the sovereign suite, I think. It's either a school assembly, a wedding, or a press conference that's about to happen. I feel like we're early. There was one dot in the stadium, there's one in the centre circle. We have to hope that this picture's good. Is that? Is it just the same picture? It can't just be the same picture, can it? It's just the same picture. They started off so well, didn't they? They've got a little next door. You know, you go get your little pastry from the bakery at Lidl. Little bakery, massively underrated. Then you go to the away day, you have a lovely old time. But no, they've ruined everything. I thought for a moment this was Shrewsbury Town's football players. Uh, I mean, it could be youth team players, I guess. Either way, no idea what's going on here. This might be the most disappointing away day ever. Not because I expected it to be amazing, but just because it started off strong with a car park and they've completely let themselves and me down. I'm going to go to Google Earth here and see if we can redeem it. Let's get to the match. I've had enough. Shrewsbury Town Football Club, 10 out of 10 car park, 1 out of 10 stadium, 3 out of 10 total score. Yeah, normally I'd give them a higher score for the little, but that's not managed to cheer me up today. Right, we're getting into this match. Like I mentioned already, 4 is starting up top for this game. Unfortunately, Jude is still coming back from injury. Faye drops down to the bench alongside Espinosa still. The rest of the outfield team, though, is going to remain unchanged from the past game. Chambers served his suspension in the EFL Cup, so that was nice. I did mention the team was unchanged. I tell a lie. Gasperi is back from injury. He's in the team over McLaughlin today. I do feel like Gasperi and McLaughlin are really going to be battling for that centre-back spot alongside Mkise. I suppose we'll look at performances like this one today to judge things. Uh, they've scored after four minutes. It's not great. I'm trying to find someone to blame here, but to be honest, the entire defence looks like a mess. And in fact, it's Mkise who misses out on the header. Keeley's caught off the line. So Rosebury take the lead. Well, it wasn't exactly the best start in this game. We've got to turn things around here. We've got a long road to redemption. Last match was disappointing this episode. Can this one be a change in fortunes? Guerrero was bringing it forward and then had the ball snatched away from him. Martin now brings forward the ball, gives it to Jones. Shepherding him away from our goal just a little bit as he goes back to Pike. Down the line now to Jones again. Shrewsbury looking confident with the ball, but Gasperi there wins the ball back for us. And Goma, Goldsmith, where is Thor? Here is Thor. Shoot. Go on, my son. Oh, my word. He skipped past his man. I thought he'd scored. I thought I was going to look like a genius, but the shot hits the crossbar. Now, the thing to note with Thor is he is ridiculously quick and quite good in the air. For Guernsey Park to Prem watchers, you might remember Kavan Williams, the Jamaican forward we had in the championship. He's that mould of player. You know, he runs a lot. He jumps a lot. He can't really think as a footballer, but at this level, physicals can take you a very long way, especially in the football manager match engine. And I'm looking at four thinking, you could be the kind of goal scorer we've needed. I've made him the biggest earner. I need some big performances. Can he make one happen here? Timmy. Options left, options right. Gives it back to him, Kize. Ricky D, loads of space. Players queuing up in the middle. Can he pick one out? Four is there. He's bloody scored. It's uno uno. I realised that bit of commentary would have been better if I'd said it was 1-1, but using the Icelandic word for one. I don't know what the Icelandic word for one is. I really should learn it. Four, welcome to the club. I always feel like there's massive pressure on players when they join a football club to just immediately perform, especially strikers. You know, that first goal, if players don't get it right away, it's easy to get impatient, isn't it, in Football Manager? I feel like now he's got that goal, we can relax, we can trust him. If a chance comes his way, I'm now expecting him to score it, even though he missed one earlier in the game. We've responded well to going a goal down. We've drawn it level, but now we want to press home this advantage. Lovely build-up play. That was a hell of a switch by Gasperi. Ricky D now with the ball. Plenty of players in the middle. Ricky D running to the corner flag, thinks he's playing golf. We get in the middle, defence block it. And with that, I think Shrewsbury are going to live to fight another day. But the pressure is ramping up. Corner. Four. He's over it. He's going to whip it into the middle. There's loads of options there. It's gone over all of them. And Kize, though, not the quickest player, does well to keep it in. Falls to Masters. Pien holds on to the looping header. We are having chance after chance after chance. Seven shots. An XG of 1.67. 
less than 15 minutes into this game. I mean, as we learned last game, XG means nothing, but let's look at the stats as a reason for optimism. As we bring forward the ball again, four, using that pace, causing some issues, gets dispossessed, but Ricky D finds himself with it. Timmy now has the ball. He goes down, Ricky D back with it. Timmy, lovely build-up play here. Is there end product? You bet your bottom dollar there is. 2-1. It could be a goal bonanza today. It's got that energy about it. I'll say now, Timmy is not a man I look at and expect goals from. Ricky D is going to get an assist here, I've just realised. He doesn't deserve it. What a goal that is on his left foot. Might have taken a deflection on the way in. Not going to complain. It's 2-1. That feels good after going a goal down. But, and I hate to have this kind of attitude, after the last game, I'm scared to celebrate anything. It might look good. It won't be good until the full-time whistle goes and we've got three points. Chambers into the middle. Goldsmith shoots. Keeper saves it. It's another opportunity. Ricky D throwing it to Guerrero. Ricky D now back with the ball. Guerrero, options in the middle, puts it in. It falls to four. He's got two. Don't mind me uh, just checking the Icelandic for two. It said Tver. So it says Tver for the season. And if you're wondering, Jack, why didn't you search second of the season? I did. It came up with this and I got, got scared. Let's get back to the game. Now, if you are wondering, Jack, you tried to sign four in the summer and he wanted like £4,000. How have you managed to sign him for £2,600 a week? He's got a very big signing on bonus and lots of clauses. I can't remember what I set his goal bonus to be. A little bit concerned by his goal scoring here. By a little bit, I mean, I'm massively concerned. Also, that looked offside there, didn't it? Not going to complain. We've got a chance. And Goma whipping it in. Back post him. Kize. Gasperi. I think that was a shot, not a pass that's fallen all the way through. Guerrero now has the ball. How have we not scored another? Just based off this episode alone, my biggest concern is that we're not going to finish all our chances. We've created so much in this game. It probably should be more than three. I really should be happy with the current scoreline, but yeah, the end product is lacking. Five minutes left of this first half. Shrewsbury have not had a single shot since they scored. It has been that kind of game. We've been very good. Don't that, that doesn't mean they should score again. They've already scored one set piece. Jones is over this one. Whipped in. Ricky D heads it kind of away. It comes to Jones here. He gives it to other Jones. He's offside. Thank the Lord. I would have been fuming. Okay, halftime in this game, 3-1. Great performance. We've created an absolute ton. And actually, in this game, we have matched our XG for what that's worth. Well done, control in possession. I just want to go and chat to four in the corner. Mate, you've been doing absolutely amazingly. I don't know what you had for breakfast, but whatever it was, uh, we need to give the rest of the team some of it. This guy's going to be the future. Friendship ended with Jude Soons at Bell. For our instant, he is my new best friend now. Have just paused the game. 30 minutes left here. I am going to make some subs. And Goma's not been playing particularly well. Fahey is going to come in. Goldsmith, disappointing. Jude's still coming back from injury, and I don't really trust him. So Espinosa, we're going to bring in. You know what? Chambers isn't having a good game. Got sent off before. Don't trust him. Morgan, I'm bringing you on now. I swear to God, if Chambers gets sent off before this change happens, I am going to be angry. Srosbury on the attack. Craig, edge of the box. They get another here. I'm going to feel nervous. They've... They've got one. Jamie John has scored to make it 3-2. Is it just me or does Jamie John sound like the most regen name ever? Like It doesn't sound like a real name, does it? I don't know why he's claiming credit for this goal either. It's deflected in, hasn't it? That has just deflected in. It's very unfortunate. Can confirm, by the way, Jamie John is a regen. Although there probably is someone called Jamie John out there in the world. Let's just hope they're not a subscriber of mine. Yen with the ball for Shrewsbury here. This was only meant to be a short two-match episode. I say short. The, the episodes are never that short here. It's been a very highlighty kind of game, hasn't it? Ricky D heads it straight to their man. Gaines is bursting through the middle. That is the least convincing save ever, but at least it's not hit the back of the net. Okay, they have got a corner hit. Jones is over it. He is going to whip it into the middle. Gasperi kind of half heads it away. Now with John. Jones. John. Oh, I'm just scared. Whenever they bring the ball forward, it just feels like chaos is going to happen. It's free, free. Can we all just agree this might be the worst episode of all time in terms of what's happened in the matches? How have we... Well, we didn't win the first game. We could still win this one here. But how have we found ourselves in this situation? I'm livid. I am curious, right? If you play Football Manager and games like this happen, do you look reflectively at your team and think, how can we improve? Or do you do what I do and just sulk and think, well, it's just one of those games. Just, just one of those things. Nothing I could have done about it. it. It does have one of those games energies about it. What is Timmy doing? What is happening here? What? Why are we here? We're getting very philosophical here at work. The space today. Wolves got the ball. 
Espinosa can't tackle. Jones has it for them. If they go on to win this game, I'm I might be the most angry I've ever been. Campbell's bringing it through the middle. They've they've scored again. They've scored. They've scored again. I need alcohol. There's ten minutes left here, and it's now four three. It's it's now four three. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I mean, we've had seven goals. I wouldn't bet against there being another. In terms of entertainment value, Rugby Town, we have it here at this football club. Guerrero's through. Can he score? No, I don't know why he went wide there. And then tried to shoot from range. He's an idiot. I realise I should be making tactical changes to go more attacking, but it has just got the feeling of one of those games where I take my hands off the keyboard and mouse and say, football manager gods, take the wheel. You know, do, do what you want here. I don't, it just feels like nothing I do is going to make a difference. Kasperi. I thought for a sec he was going to head it to their attacker. Keely now collects. How much added time is there going to be here? That is the big question. Kasperi lays it wide. Morgan through the middle. Masters. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. Masters down the line to Morgan. I'm starting to believe we could score. And that in itself, that is a, that's a dangerous proposition. Timmy dinks it. Morgan can't get there. Win the header, Masters. He does. This was meant to be Thor's day. I thought it was going to be his day. It's not going to be his day, although it might be for Hay's day. It's 4-4. We might not get the best results from today's episode. It's been two of the best live commentaries of all time. Can we all at least agree to that? What has happened in this uh, game? Ricky D, I think, might get the assist. Four was a distraction for Hay, lurking in behind. There's seven minutes of added time here. There's six minutes left. Do I want to change anything more? Guerrero, you come off. Jude, on you come. You're going to play as an advantage forward i'm bringing on the big gun to end this game is there to be a late twist or a late goal it'd be very anticlimactic if nothing happens now wouldn't it there's 50 seconds left and a highlights begun what is happening could we steal it morgan whips it in Hien collects it for them there is 30 seconds left here and i mean there's there's 30 seconds i don't know what else to say they're on the attack no no stop stop he's gonna go right isn't he he's gonna just square it in the middle there's a man there We're just ending the episode now. I'm just, you know what? This is one of those games of football magic where it doesn't dignify an end to the episode. Get me to full time and then I'm just hitting stop record. How have I lost that by four? Were they playing down a man at the end of the game? They were literally playing down a man at the end. Let's just end the episode. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.